In this video, I want to talk about something not often talked about within the developer community, and that is financial investments. Developers tend to make a lot of money, especially in Silicon Valley, yet so many are so oblivious to the concept of financial investments. If you are already a financially knowledgeable developer, then great, this video is not for you. This video is for people who are young and financially challenged developers, either somebody with a dwindling bank account, even with their above average salaries, or people who are okay to good with money save, saved up but not sure how to make the best use of them. I'm not a rich person, nor am I a hedge fund manager. I'm just a frugal developer who hustled his whole life to build up some extra money and discover a way to get around 8-10% to return on his investments year over year. The tips I'm going to share are all based on my personal experience, so I hope to give you a starting point to your own research so you can make some decisions about your finances. So to start, I want to give you a crash course on investments. I'm not going to make this very boring, so I'm going to put this in three categories of different investments. So the first one I'm going to talk about is called passive investments. Passive investments are funds that are well diversified. It usually contains thousands of stocks for the good and bad companies. Some will may contain bonds as well. Your retirement fund is an example of one of those funds. It could be a index fund, ETF, or a mutual fund. Now you don't have to know what they are. They're basically they're a bunch of stocks combined together. Now the benefits of passive fund is that you are investing in the market itself, meaning your investments are well diversified across hundreds of companies. So the probability of you losing your money is very low. You only go broke when all the companies you invest in go bankrupt, which is not likely to happen. You'll earn money from your investment little by little when the companies you invest grow over time. If the market does well, so will your earnings. And over time, the money will add up quickly due to compound earning, meaning the money that you earn are reinvested back into the market. This is the recommended way to invest if you like safety and can almost guarantee growth with your money. I recommend apps like Betterment to manage your passive fund. The next type of fund that I'm going to talk about is called active funds. Active funds are funds consist of smaller number of stocks, individual stocks that you buy with your hard-earned money. The method is a bit more risky because you are not as diversified as a passive fund, and the stocks that you pick can behave erratically, and most importantly, you are the one doing the picking, not a professional. With more risk and comes with more reward because you have now have control over your money. And depends on if, what companies you pick, you could make potentially a lot of money. And you can also lose a lot of money. So for example, let's say um, you like Amazon as a big company. And in this hypothetical scenario, when you bought 50 shares of Amazon at $245, for a total of $12,000 on April 24, 2012. Fast forward to today, each share of Amazon costs $835, and your 50 shares of Amazon is now worth $41,788. You just made a gain of $29,591, which is more than triple your initial investment. Try to beat that with your savings account. Of course, nobody can tell the future, so you really have to do research before you invest in the company. Now the last category I want to talk about is called super active investment. This is something I made up because it puts all the other investment tools uh, into one single category. I do not recommend you to do anything what I'm about to say if you're just starting out because this has the potential to make you lose a lot of money or win a lot of money. Super active investments refer to big short-term plays by monitoring short-term patterns, timing the market with events around the companies or the country, and bet on whether something will go up or go down. Things like options, futures, forex exchange all fall into that category. Most people will lose money if you try to play this game, but for those who succeed, they will become very, very rich. If you have some money to burn, then want to make some quick cash, then this is the way to go. Now I want to talk about tools that are used to do investments. The website that I visit almost every day is called Yahoo Finance. It's one of their better products. It contains one of the most informative sites out there for investors. You can look up stock quotes and get latest news about a particular company right at your fingertip. And you can build a sample portfolio to with all your favorite stocks to see the status daily. I get extremely useful insight real 
real-time data about companies so I can invest in, so I can make better informed decisions. So I suggest you check out Yahoo Finance. The tool, my, perf my preferred application to do passive investment is Betterment. Betterment provides a passive investment or ETF or index fund. It's extremely easy to use and it's literally set it and forget it. All you have to do is download the app for iOS or Android, set up a goal, a risk ratio, meaning whether you want 80% uh, stocks and 20% bonds or 90% stocks or 10% bonds or 50-50 for equal amount of risk. For example, if you invest $40,000 into the Betterman ETF fund with a risk of 80% stock and 20% bonds, then within 20 years, it will be projected to become around $650,000 based on the result delivered by Betterman's investment algorithm. The algorithm will automatically set up an auto deposit on your bank account and if the market doesn't perform to their expectations and your, ex your, your expected value is off track, then it will ask you to adjust your monthly deposit into the fund. Basically, it will do whatever it takes and, and help you reach your goal over a set amount of years. A really cool feature from Betterment is the Smart Deposit feature, which sets a threshold on your bank account and automatically deposit any money in excess of that threshold. So let's say you have a threshold of $10,000 in your bank account and somebody gives you $5,000. That $5,000 will automatically be deposited into Betterment to your index fund. So Betterment will give you a really nice return. I get about 8 to 9% return every year on the fund and so far has been great. Now if you like active investment, then there's no better app than Robinhood. Robinhood has been very popular in the media that people have been using and I really like to use Robinhood to make trades for individual stocks. The big selling point for Robinhood is that it's 100% free. You don't have to pay every time you make a stock trade. Whereas if you go to a big trading company like Fidelity or Charles Schwab, they'll, you'll have to pay $7, about $7 per trade. So Robinhood, you don't have to pay anything. You can use it in a really awesome iOS or Android app. And I set up a list of company stocks I like and watch them closely daily. Whenever I like, I feel like a good time to buy or sell a stock, I will use Robinhood and make the trade. There's really no catch. Because the fund that Robinhood uses to fund to, to in their system, they invest that money to get a return for their company. That's where they make their money from. They also offer a premium plan for advanced in, in traders, so I suggest you check it out if you once you are a little bit used to the app. The last thing I want to talk about are some tips and strategy. I've been doing this for over two years now, and I have an average ROI of 8 to 10% on my investment year over year, which isn't that bad for a non-professional. It definitely beats put money in the bank, which sometimes can even lose money due to inflation. I've compiled a list of tips that I found useful for me, and so, but take it with a grain of salt and do your own research. Number one is that I've been a frugal person all my life. I don't really get satisfaction from materialistic things. And as an INTJ personality type, rather analytical person, I evaluate every purchase decisions and weighing on what value does it bring to my life. Now this does not mean being cheap or saving your money to the point where starving or you have a bunch of money in the bank. It simply means being aware of your spending and make smart decisions about whether to buy something or not. Impulse buying is something that's unavoidable and I've done it a few times. It, that is okay as long as you don't make it a daily or weekly occurrence. Take a few moments to compare prices across multiple outlets and use coupons, promo codes, Look at for sales on websites like Slick Deals or eBay to get great deals on things that will otherwise cost you much more elsewhere. The best thing you can spend your money on is your, for your loved ones and friends. Spend money on experiences, not things. Number two, set aside enough money in your savings account that can last you up to a year. This is a good bankroll management rule for a rainy day. The rest you should put in investments. Number three, become financially educated. Spend your time educate yourself about the world of finance. The U.S. education system didn't do a good job for me when I grew up. I would think all this finance mumbo-jumbo are just for rich people from Wall Street. 
But remember, knowledge is power, and to beat the system, you need to know the system. Number four, invest now. Time equals money. If there's one thing I would tell my 13-year-old self is to work my ass off. I would babysit, cut lawns, sell lemonade, hustle, and put every single penny I earn into a passive fund. The 13-year-old me have almost zero risk because I was living with my parents and I have no living expenses. That money will become life-changing by the time I'm in my mid to late 20s. Number five. Use a stock market simulator to play around first. Investopedia has an awesome simulator where they give you a virtual hundred thousand dollars balance to trade. Use it to practice until you're ready to put out some real money. Number six, do not be an emotional trader. When you're doing active investing, try to think long term. It's very tempting to sell certain stocks when it dips. Most people who does that will never succeed because you will be timing the market, which has a 90% failure rate, even for professional traders. I do the opposite. I put money in for a stock when it dips because I can buy it on a discount, and only if I'm already invested in a company that I did a lot of research on. Number seven, don't invest by hype. Rather, invest as if you own the company. This is a tip from Warren Buffett. You should treat each share you buy as if the company is your own. You should know as much about the company as possible before you commit money to it. There will be times when many people rush to buy a random, hot, new kid on the block company because the stock is very, very hot and everybody's buying it. You should only do it if you know about the company and believe its future is bright. Otherwise, keep your money. Number eight, max out your retirement fund. Unless you're a freelance developer, chances are your company offers retirement funds. My number one advice is to contribute to the maximum allowed every month. And if your company provides matching contribution, that's even better. This money will be taken out of your paycheck every month and offer tax benefits. You have to not think about this every month and just let it happen, because after a few years, that money will grow, and before you know it, you'll be much, much closer to being a millionaire. Number nine. Investing gold and silver as a hedge for the future. Gold and silver usually move in the opposite direction of the strength of the U.S. dollar. I will set aside some fund to buy gold and silver for the event of a total collapse of the U.S. dollar, which isn't likely to happen. But if anything, in the 1920s Great Depression and the recent 2008 financial crisis have taught us, it can happen. Usually, when events like that happen, the value of gold and silver goes straight up. Number ten. Don't go into super active trading until you're ready. It's true you can make a lot of money from volatility, from trading options, futures, or forex. It also comes with huge risks, so you should educate yourself and play around before you try it. Number eleven. If you don't want to spend time on what I mentioned above, pay a fund manager to manage your money. A good fund manager can give you a good return compared to doing it yourself. The downside is that you have to pay them a cut. I hope this video provides you some useful insights on how I invest as a developer. I would like to see more people become financially aware of how to handle their money, and let me know what you think of it if it has helped you in the comments below. Hey guys, I want to talk about ES6 for a second. For those of you who don't know what it is, it's the modern version of JavaScript. Many companies are now hiring people who are versatile in the language. You need to know it in modern day web development. I highly recommend West Boss's ES6 for Everyone course for this. West Boss is a pro in the industry, and he puts out some amazing web dev courses. I guarantee you will master ES6 quickly and painlessly with this course. Use the link in the description below to go to his course page to check out what he has to offer. I will see you in the next video.